there, Sage Canada of VO2 Max Productions here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about the mental side of running, and I'd like to thank uh, Jay Barnett that submitted this question, and thanks to all those that voted on a training talk topic. Uh, it really helps me when we get all the thumbs up and all the comments. I really appreciate all your feedback and support. So they say that distance running is 90% mental and 10% physical. Well, I'd like to think that uh, it's more like 70% mental and 70% physical. So you basically have to give 140%. But seriously, uh, mental, the mental side of running is a huge component, and it's why I think this training talk is really important, and there's a lot more to discuss. I'm just going to barely scratch the surface here today. So, you know, with, with things like we see this mind-body connection, there's all this this powerful connection where the two systems really overlap. And uh, you see it in the placebo effect, you know, you get people taking sugar pills and you tell them that it's really medicine and it, it makes their physical ailments go away. And you can do an experiment right now actually if you want to join me. Uh, Sandy actually pointed this one out for me. And uh, you take your two hands and you match them up nice and level together. And you make sure uh, you're aligned at the bottom there in the creases. Make sure your creases at the bottom are lined up and you can see you know, maybe one hand's a little bit longer than the other. Your fingertips kind of jut out a little bit farther uh, from one side. Now, whatever hand is, well, it doesn't matter which one. Let's say it's, it's your right hand. Let's look at that right hand and let's just think to it, grow bigger, grow bigger. And say it out loud with me, grow bigger, grow bigger. And really stretch that hand out. And just really believe that this hand is stretching. Grow bigger, grow bigger, grow bigger, grow bigger. And believe that for 10 seconds. You really gotta believe this. Just stretch that hand out, it's gonna grow. Now put your hands back together the same way and see how they line up. See if uh, the right hand actually did grow bigger than the left hand. Because uh, it should have. And it's really amazing. I didn't believe it at first. I didn't think it was going to happen. And I know what you're thinking, but no, this does not work for other parts of your body. So that's just one little example of how strong the mind-body connection is. How the, the mental manifests itself into the physical. And this applies to sport uh, very well because we have all these physical things that cause distress in distance running, and let's be serious, running really freaking hurts. It sucks. Um, it's painful. And you got things like acidosis, you got, you know, your lactic acid's building up. This is mainly in shorter events, half marathon and under. But, you know, that burning feeling, lactic acid, your muscle neurons are just losing it because of the acidic environment. And you're, you know, it feels like your lungs are on fire, you're, you're, maybe you're gonna puke, you know, there's all sorts of horrible things. Uh, in the longer distance ultra marathons, marathons, you got glycogen depletion, very real problem. Uh, you're, you're running low, on, you get low blood sugar, hypoglycemia basically, and you're bonking, you're, you get negative thoughts, you're hallucinating, you're dizzy, your muscles are, can't function, you're totally out of energy, it's, it's horrible. Uh, sleep deprivation, dehydration, muscle cramps from uh, sheer muscle fatigue, but also maybe from uh, electrolyte imbalance. All these things really add up and bring a lot of pain. And whenever you have to run hard, uh, if you're running hard in a hard workout, even if it's a tempo run or interval workout, speed session, uh, long run, long, you know, running longer than you've ever run before, or you're in a race and you're going to push yourself, uh, a lot of the whole pushing process has to do with working through these levels of discomfort and working through this pain. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today, is some strategies that will help you, or at least have helped me in the past and helped other athletes uh, get more from their running because uh, they're able to kind of deal with this pain. And so I find that perception is everything. How we perceive the pain to be is how it might make it worse or, or, or not. So. Uh, the first step is, is to accept that there's going to be pain. Um, I haven't done a race where there wasn't a lot of pain if I wasn't pushing myself uh, pretty dang hard. And the same thing goes with workouts. Uh, if you have a hard workout, sometimes you sit there with dread. I always wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh crap, i got a race today. Like, this is really going to suck. Um, but you know, if you accept, okay, you know, it's going to hurt, it's going to kind of suck, but it's self-induced. I mean, you, you chose to do this. so. Uh, that's the first kind of attitude shift uh, that I've, I found has helped me. Uh, it's just accepting that it's going to hurt, there's going to be pain. That's a constant. Just see that that's a constant. And so that way, when you get into the race, when you get into that hard point in the workout, and there will be a hard point during the race or the workout, um, you're able to say, okay, I knew this was coming, I knew the pain was coming, and it's easier to accept rather than like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm really hurting, this is horrible, and you're filled with all this dread, because that just kind of makes your perception of the pain 
kind of worse. So it's a pain is a constant. Hopefully, you know, it, it, it's a steady, it's not a sudden shock pain unless you pulled something. Um, usually with the shorter races, acidosis, uh, building up lactic acid, it's probably going to get slowly progressively worse as the race goes on. In ultras, sometimes you could bonk, you could bounce back from a bonk a little bit. Maybe you stop at an aid station, you eat a bit, you get rehydrated, and you could feel better, uh, you know, at mile 70 in 100 versus mile 20 sometimes. I haven't run 100 miles yet. But uh, there's always been a point in my races, whether it was a 800 meters or a mile or a 5K, 10K, half marathon, ultra marathon, uh, there's always a point in the race, and usually it's around halfway, second half, maybe two-thirds of the way in, three-quarters of the way in, where I always doubt myself, and I'm always like, crap, why'd I sign up for this? Why am I doing this shit? Like, this freaking sucks. Um, I hate running. I want to quit. I want to slow down. Well, first I always say I want to slow down, and then it's like, well, I might as well just quit. Like, this, I'm throwing the towel and every time without fail, and I've been doing this for, for 15 years. Um, and there's always that point. And sometimes it's worse than other days. If you're having a really bad day, it gets a lot worse. But, and I think really how you respond to that challenge, that self-doubt within yourself, um, it's not other people that are doubting you, uh, is how you could grow as a, as a runner and as a person, uh, become maybe more disciplined. And it's not this attitude where it's, I'm never gonna DNF. Like I respect people that don't DNF, but sometimes, you know, for health reasons, I think a DNF's appropriate. But you know, if, you, if it's gonna set you back really far, you're risking injury or hypothermia or something really horrible, you know, you, you may wanna consider it. But if it's just working through mental pain and working for a, a finishing time that you could be proud of or a finishing place that you could be proud of or something that's, that is overcoming this adversity, uh, then it's a worthwhile endeavor to pursue and pain is kind of getting in the way of that uh, goal. And so, uh, like I talked about in my other mental training video, which I'll link to up there, uh, you know, there's other things you could do pre-race, uh, positive affirmations, vis visualization, uh, things like that, you know, always trying to think positive, however uh, much doubt you have and however painful it gets. Um, those kinds of things, uh, you know, running within, running for yourself, intrinsic rewards, uh, really have helped me along the way. And another key uh, component during a race or a hard workout when you start to struggle is to think, you know, why am I doing this? And, uh, you know, for me, I get a lot of confidence when I think back to workouts I did to prepare for a race. I'm like, you know what? I signed up for this race. Uh, I entered it. I've been excited about this race for months and months and months or weeks and weeks and weeks. And I told my friends on Facebook about it. And I, I you know, my, my uh, girlfriend's coming out to support me. And uh, my family members are following the Iron Var Twitter feed, or they're there helping crew. Uh, and so you have all these, you know, supporters too, maybe in your life, or not, um, that are kind of, you know, holding you accountable. And so I think of them, I'm like, well, they came all the way out here, not for me to walk it in the last 20 miles at Iraq like I did two years ago, um, but to, to support you and to see you excel and do your best and be happy with your performance. So you think about other people, uh, you think about all the training and sacrifice and time that you put into this effort and you want to you know make yourself proud and, and work through this adversity uh, so that you could look back on it and say you know what I tried my best that day uh, maybe it wasn't what I expected before maybe it was but I you know I tried and that's the important thing and during the race when you're in the on the battlefield and it's you know this this painful scenario where you want to quit uh, you start thinking of those things and I've, I've found that that usually uh, kind of helps and then you know just recognizing pain realizing that it's a constant it's gonna be there um, and you're just gonna try to work through it as best you can and like I said before and like others many others have said over and over uh, for a long time <laughs> perception is everything and there's a really nice video going around uh, by this runner or about this runner who uh, just graduated from high school Kayla Mount Kayla Montgomery. Uh, so if you search, search her name under running. So I actually, I think it's called uh, Catching Kayla. Kayla with a, with a K. And it's about this, she's running high school track her senior year. Um, and she has MS. She's 18 years old, has MS. Uh, and it's, it's really interesting because what happens to her when she runs races, she runs the mile and two mile on the track, uh, is her legs go numb. She can't actually feel her legs while she's running hard. 
and you know she started off on the team and her coach was like okay maybe you know she had the potential maybe to be a varsity hopeful he didn't see any spark of of of, of being you know super fast and what happened is she ends up being one of the the best uh, two mile runners in the country for all of high schoolers i think she ran like i think it was like 1040 or 1050 for two miles uh, in high school which is crazy and she's she would run these races with her legs numb but she's still feeling you know the effort the the acidosis the lactic acid in her upper body you still feel it in your arms you're still burning your your heart's pumping you're breathing hard so she feels all that but her legs are numb and she's numb to the pain in her legs and you know she's running really fast and then all of a sudden she crosses the finish line and uh, that's when the pain comes back and it, it hits her legs all of a sudden and you see it in the video it's this sudden pain like all the pain that would have been building up as she was running along in her legs suddenly hits her all at once when she crosses the finish line and it's this overwhelming sensation uh, but it's really interesting in seeing how you know if you were running numb um, not, not if you had MS but if you were running with your mind kind of shut off and thinking of other things uh, then hopefully you could kind of tune out some of the pain uh, that might be manifesting itself in different ways as you run. And so what another strategy that I found uh, that's really helpful during races especially or tough workouts at the end of a tough workout is to focus on things you can control. Focus on your leg turnover, trying to run with good form. Think good form, quick and light feet, uh, relax your breathing, take a deep breath, exhale forcefully. Because if you're thinking of all these things, okay, you know, when's the next aid station or you know, how are my mile splits doing? Uh, things like that that you can control, it's better to, to be able to detach yourself from the pain. And uh, you'll get inspiration from watching this video with, with Kayla because she's really an amazing person and an amazing athlete. And she's, had to, she's been overcoming a lot of adversity uh, for the sake of running and getting the best out of uh, what's been her potential and uh, you know what the card she's been dealt and so I think uh, you know taking inspiration from things stories like that uh, and then applying it to your own running and your own life or you know any endeavor you have uh, going on is is really important and then I guess my final tip at least for this uh, short video like I said I'm just barely scratching the surface of uh, the mental side of running developing mental toughness and strategies you could use uh, and this is probably the most uh, important one that I've found, and uh, maybe some of you've heard already, but it's breaking the race into manageable distances. And this is while you're running. Uh, I do this during workouts, I do this during races. And basically, especially when you're running an ultra, I've found, if you're 30 miles deep into a 15 mile race, and all of a sudden you think, crap, I gotta run 20 miles still, it could be really overwhelming. Or you're looking at your Garmin or your GPS, and seeing the miles click off and you're like shit I gotta do 50 of these like over hills and stuff like it's overwhelming to think about that and I've heard it even more so in like a hundred mile races um, same thing with a marathon too uh, but even in shorter races you know 5k on the track or just you know trying to do a workout like uh, I do a lot of workouts like eight by a thousand meters so I'm doing eight repeats of 1k and uh, after about four reps five reps I start to really doubt myself and it's I'm starting to be in pain I used to always say if you weren't really hurting halfway in to the workout or race, you didn't go out hard enough, which was kind of silly and stupid, but it's also kind of true because uh, you're, you're getting tired already and you still have, you know, two thirds or a third of the workout left to do. And so then my attitude would always shift after the fourth one. I'd be like, OK, I'm over halfway, like I'm over halfway done, over halfway there. It's good. I'm making progress. And then I take the next rep and it'd be the fifth rep and I'd be like, just you know, this is the hardest one because I got three left, but, you know, it's it's my fifth rep and I'm over halfway done. And then you get done with that. And then you're on the sixth rep. And I'm like, and at that point, I think to myself, okay, just two more to go. And the second to last one doesn't have to be as hard. I play tricks on my mind like that. I say, you know, it doesn't have to be as hard because uh, the last one I'll, I'll do faster. And then all of a sudden you're on the last rep. And it's like, last one, fast one. Um, not really. You don't always want to do that. But you're like, well, I could get done this last one of the rep. You know, it's, it's the last one of the workout. And maybe it hurts the most, maybe you did do it the fastest, but uh, you, you got it done. And that's how I kind of mentally break down like an interval workout, or if it's a tempo run, I'm breaking down the, the mileage. Um, and the same thing goes with the race. You know, it, a lot of times in ultras, it's good to count just one mile at a time. How many miles do I have to the next aid station? You know, think about things you could control, like your hydration, how many, when is the last time you took a gel? 
uh, all these quantitative data figures that you could concentrate on instead of the, the burning in your legs that you're feeling. Uh, and so that's kind of how I uh, break it down and try to work through things, you know, just one step at a time. The same thing if you're running 5K or 10K or you're just starting out running. Um, you know, you're, you slowly build up progress and you, you take it one step at a time, literally, or, you know, half mile at a time as you build up your distance, as you, as you run farther than you've ever run before, or you run faster, a faster pace than you have previously. Uh, and, you know, these things build confidence over time. And so I think that's kind of helped over the years, at least in my career, is knowing that, okay, this tempo run's gonna hurt, I could do it. Some days it hurts a little bit more than others, it seems like, but, uh, you know, if I push myself at the right intensity and I do it smart, then, uh, you know, I'm pacing myself for this, this effort. And um, pacing a whole, could be a whole nother uh, training talk topic. So I'm gonna cut it off there before it gets really long. But uh, thanks again for, for all the views and all the subscriptions. Uh, thanks for sharing this video and like it if, uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. But uh, I really do appreciate all the comments for future training talk topics. And uh, stay tuned for more VO2max productions every Thursday. Oh, also one more thing I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm working on a new project and I think it'll really implement uh, this whole discussion uh, in, the, in this video and in my other uh, mental training talk video, which I'll link to there. Um, and it's a really exciting project. I'm collaborating on it. And uh, you could stay tuned for that in the coming months, but uh, really something that I think will be useful uh, in applying this knowledge and applying a lot more because it's very, it could be very in depth and it, it really helps to your performance to go over these things on a regular basis. So uh, stay tuned for that.